So I wanted to jump on just to talk about calculating, monitoring, and managing um, load with personal training clients um, and how I've done this using Google Sheets and just give a bit of an example of what, why, and how. First thing is to talk about what they are. So max load, average load, and volume load. Max load is simply the uh, maximum amount of weight lifted um, at any given time. The average load is, say, across five sets, what is the average amount of weight that that you've lifted or your, your client has lifted. And volume load is then the sets times the reps times the weight. So this is the total amount of kilos that have been placed upon the body. So it's this external load, how much total work um, have they done? Now, volume load can sometimes get a bit of a bad rep as a metric that's tracked quite a lot, but then not actually utilized. Like, what is the point? And I think when you're looking down the sports performance route, sports performance route and specific um, training goals, particularly sporting goals, then yes, this isn't necessarily that that important um, or can't really tell you too much, particularly when there's different modalities of training going on. However, with novice athletes and personal training clients, I think it's a great way to gauge sessions. And I'll show you why and how in this example it's, it's made such a difference. So the first thing is how we calculate it. So now this is very simple. All I have here is each session we put the dates in, the exercise, sets, reps, and load. Then the max load is super simple. You're just going to go max. Uh, so what I've got here is the max of these three, four cells for the four sets. Okay. But what I've actually done is if that max equals zero, leave it blank. So I don't want it to take into account the zero. That's the same on the average when we look at the average or the max. I want it to be blank. Okay. So it's just the equals max for those cells. But I've put if max of this equals zero, leave it blank in the double quotation marks. And then if it's not um, zero, then I just want it to show the score. See there it's 15 because that's the highest. Okay. If I was to delete, delete that, okay, it's just going to go down to clear for all of them. So I'll just put them back in. Average load, let's say I'm looking at these ones now, it's exactly the same. I've got an average of those four cells. Now I've actually got that as an if error this time, because normally if there's only um, one or none, it will come up with a div x error. Okay, so now it's not asking if it comes to zero. It's saying if there's an error, I can't find an average, then leave it blank. So that's again, that's the average of those cells. But it's if there's an error in that, leave it blank. And the last one takes a little bit more time to set up, but it is the sum of the reps times the weight plus the reps times the weight in the second set plus the reps times the weight in the third plus the reps times the weight in the fourth now again what i've done there is if the sum of all of that is zero leave it blank if it's not zero then i want you to show the sum of all of that okay i'll leave that on the screen for a little bit to hopefully so you can see it so if the sum of that times that plus that times that plus that times that plus that times that equals zero, we're just going to leave it blank by putting double quotation marks. If not, then it will just do that calculation. Okay, I have put an if error there just in case you put another character in there um, that messes up the formula, it will show as blank as opposed to having an error. So if you want to put a bit of information in or something, that's fine. What I also do is important to know how I write things down. So for me, if I've got dumbbell seated lateral raises, two sets of 12 at 10 kilos, but it's five each side. So that way, because I want to know the total amount of kilos put on the body, I don't just want to write five kilos because that's the weight of the dumbbell, okay, because they're holding two of them. So it's important that you take the total weight. Then also what I've got here, let's say doing a bench press, okay, but it's dumbbell. I actually count that as, this is the other way you can do it, six reps on each side. 25 kilos in each hand so you could put that as six total reps with 50 kilos i.e. 225 kilo dumbbells 
or you could put it at 12 reps again for each arm but just at 25 kilos so you can decide how you want to write it down i also record um body weight movements at one now again you could go into the depths of what percentage of body weight they're using in specific exercises but for me with these personal training clients I just want to take it as a gauge because he doesn't find it too impactful and it doesn't seem to have too much of a negative um, effect from doing it this way. It's just a gauge and understanding of how we're doing it. So that is essentially all I am doing. Every session, we plan it and write it down or I go in and change it retrospectively. So what that then looks like is this. So I'm going to zoom out a bit so we can hope to see it. Now, this is actually across two and a half years. So the really cool thing about this is I can see that the amount of volume, the external load to how many kilos we are putting on him is gradually increasing over time. Now this client also travels a lot for work, so there's lots of fluctuations. So I can keep an eye on that as I'm going. So if there's been a period of travel, I don't want to introduce them back into training too quickly. Same with max load. What actually happened here was this was when we first met. This was a change in location when we had a lot more um, equipment available. There was only dumbbells available here and body weight, and we were learning movements. It was here there were barbells, and we started to introduce them. So we used to go an undulating sort of pattern of the dates. So we'd do a heavy barbell lifts, and then we'd come back and we'd do something the next day. There was a lot less volume. As you can see over time, we've actually decreased the maximum load. Now, this client is a little bit older as well, and they've done a lot of high-impact sports, and so they have a lot of old residual issues and in injuries. So what we were finding is it was easier to manage those if we stayed away from the heavier loads, okay, and we increased the sets and reps to get that complete, that full total external load higher. This is most evident when you look at the average load. You can see here, yeah, we learned lots of movements. We came up, we had lots of equipment and we were pushing, but we found it wasn't working. It was detrimental to some of those old issues. Um, even with going in and doing all the rehab work and any support from physiotherapists, okay? But what we've actually found is we've tailored off the average load and the max load. We've got a much better training response. They feel much better in themselves. They're seeing better results and they're actually feeling much more confident. Now, what we did here, this wasn't actually with me. But that client was was working out and they're working out with some friends and this was actually deadlift and they wanted to see where they were still okay and it actually turned out that if i click on it max load 135 on that day okay and i know back here this is one of the lists we're working on 130. so we can see that even though we haven't necessarily touched those weights by increasing that volume load with a lower average we're still able to put out those higher numbers which for for that client they were super happy with so in maintaining that strength we're just doing it in a way that's much better for that client the last thing i'll show you is on this the way that we can work this out and chart is that it's important that you aggregate your data so what that means is that on the date it's aggregating all the data for that uh that metric so it's not taking um this isn't just deadlift or it's the sum of all of them. Okay, so day is just aggregated. So it's adding together every single volume load on that day. So it is rather than showing a different um, bar on the chart for each one of these, it is taking the sum of everything for that day there. Okay, when it comes to the max load, we're aggregating it again but we're setting it to find the maximum for that day. And then once we look at the average again, we're saying making sure we're looking at aggregated for that day, but the average in those average loads. So hopefully that's relatively quick, under 10 minutes, just an overview of how to calculate um, volume load, max load, average load, and why and how you might use it over time, particularly with personal training clients um, and some of those less specific sporting goals.